Why are we always reviewing zombie movies? Because those are the most popular movies. Zombies are the epitome of pop culture. Hi, I'm Vernon and this is Kit. And we just watched The Odd Family. Kit, what did we just watch? We watched the Korean uh, zombie movie that tried to be a comedy. So when the movie starts, when this movie starts, a pharmaceutical company is covering up a PR disaster in which um, some human experiments have gone haywire. The result, as we see in this movie, is a zombie apocalypse. But that said, the end of the movie, this movie is about everything before the zombie apocalypse happens. It, it's quite an unusual uh, zombie movie because the first hour, uh, there's only one zombie, basically. Yeah. And uh, Basically, the zombie is the escaped human experiment subject from the pharmaceutical company. A bunch of, I don't know, hillbillies in a farming village in Korea find him and decide to use him to, re to revitalize their family business. They do spend a, uh, a decent amount of time like having this uh, little family drama comedy which kind of works, it introduces you to the family the, the uh, widowed father, the two grown sons, the daughter and uh, the, the eldest son's wife yeah, all, of who whom, all of whom uh, are really what you'd call um, small time scammers the comedy plays up their um, dastardly greediness. They would do anything to scam people and get rich of it. They find out that the, the zombie bite kind of like revitalizes your uh, um, uh, manhood. So yeah, it makes you healthier. And more vigorous. You could pee like a teenage boy according to one of the characters in the movie. So they uh, make some money uh, selling uh, the service of letting their pet zombie, uh, the, the guy that they found wandering around, uh, bite the elderly men in the village. Surprisingly, no one turns into the zombie for a long, long time, so everyone thinks, well, this is safe, right? This irresponsible... It's motivated by greed. That's how a zombie apocalypse happens. So it, it's an interesting uh, take, an original, uh, extrapolation of the zombie uh, genre uh, but it it was kind of interesting a bit amusing so what worked in this movie they did have some uh, interesting uh, storytelling uh, technique like uh, they don't really tell you who the characters are they just uh, they just appear on the screen and then you later figure out that oh okay okay that's the dad that's the eldest son that's the no good second son and so on so that's a bit interesting it keeps you guessing for a while so that's that's good technique everyone's a scammer but everyone has varying shades of how far they'd go and what kind of line <laughs> to draw and the way they bicker with each other about how to draw the line and what morality they have is well, it's entertaining to me. That, that's it's only it's the good start. comedy. It's good comedy. I find this film very, very interesting in the way it sort of presents the hillbilly family who operate their own scams. It puts them as a fairly unlikable family at the beginning and at the end you sort of, well, can empathize with them. You can see that, well, they're, they're just small time scammers because they're so poor it's actually quite normal it's like breaking bad right you don't like the guy but you can empathize with him so it's not that uh, unusual mm. you don't have to like characters but yeah you can empathize with them and that this is supposed to be uh one uh storytelling uh, technique uh, point. that's lost in hollywood yeah they think that you need to like the characters uh, for the audience to feel involved or no it's just empathy they're basically stock characters in a very wide comedy. There, there was just something missing. Uh, it's a very slapstick comedy that, that really paints everything with a very wide brush. They had an interesting concept, but uh, someone like uh, Edgar Wright would have done a much better job. Okay, my first Edgar Wright movie, and I think I think still his best, would be uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. I mean, that was like wacky. Zombie movies, it should be Shaun of the Dead. Edgar Wright uh, 
you, you definitely have to watch the stuff. It, there's there's nothing nothing like it. There's a Korean TV series produced by Netflix called The Kingdom, and it's about um zombies in medieval Korea. The zombie outbreak also happens in a rural outpost. Like this film, it also has you know some kind of commentary about the city versus the country and so on. It's worth a watch. The stereotypes in this movie seem a bit familiar. It seems a bit universal. You've got the uh, city slicker son who's like even more greedy, more crooked uh, than the village uh, people. The other stereotype is that even though this guy's been to the city, he had a university education, he sort of lapses into ruralisms. What about ruralisms? You're talking about his language? In terms of his accent, which he breaks into quite often. The second half of the movie, yeah, it goes like full-on zombie breakout, but the village size, but it's still quite spectacular. If you like, like, uh, large crowds of zombies uh, attacking people, yeah, you do get it here. Yeah. yeah. But you've got to wait for a long, long while before the munchies begin. There were some uh, interesting uh, scenes, like when the zombie, like, uh, like eating cabbage because it looks like human brains. And, and likes cabbage with uh, ketchup. Because the ketchup looks like blood. <laughs> and I find it interesting because um, there's this anti-vegan uh, YouTube channel and this is the, this guy's uh, criticism of vegetarians. He says that you look at the food they prepare, unconsciously they miss meat and they're trying to make it look like meat. <laughs> and they make it even bloodier and grosser than meat. For me, this film is basically two, two different comedies into one. Like what Kit says, the final third is a, a proper zombie comedy. The first two thirds is more like a regional comedy where jokes are spun from the poverty and remoteness of the village and the little quirky characters that inhabit the, the village. The, the setting is quite interesting. It's quite uh, picturesque. Uh, it's quite unique. It did bring back memories of uh, Japan that I visited uh, a long time ago. Um, I definitely saw Japan in this because uh, one of the things, funny things about Korean comedies and Japanese comedies is that they steal quite liberally from each other. Back in the late 90s, there was this comedy by Takashi Miike called The Happiness of the Katakuris. And it was about this weird family operating this horrible, no good, not even have a star in on some mountain that nobody visits. And, and they kill your guests? Their guests keep dying on them. And they keep hiding the bodies of the guests in the backyard. And sort of, this film kind of reminds me of The Happiness of the Katakuris for two reasons. One, because, well, it's obviously another um, eccentric movie trying to deal with the unusual circumstances they find themselves in. And two, because the happiness of the categories was actually a remake based on a Korean comedy called The Quiet Family. I can see the odd family getting remade by Hakashi Miike and made even more funny more comic and more surreal. If I were to pontificate about the state of the Korean movie industry, I would say that uh, they can make good movies. Uh, I haven't watched The Host or uh, Last Train from Busan, but uh, they did uh, succeed uh, internationally. Uh, this would not be one of their international successes. But you do see uh, the health of the movie industry in this movie because the, they did put a lot of thought into the script and technically the execution, uh, the production values uh, were good. I'm very impressed with how they use their sets. Most of this film actually takes place indoors within the gas station and the barn and the family home that's built on top of the gas station. Koreans. For the indoor scenes, how the cameras work 
um, how everyone is blocked with each other, it, you don't need to have a tracking long shot scene to show how great and competent set designers. I did not notice the camera work, which is good. Uh, because it's, it's great camera work because you don't notice it. You don't notice anything wrong with it. Yeah, it's just natural. It doesn't feel like uh, uh, it's too static or there's too much shaky cam or anything. Yeah, it's just, it's just there in the background. In fact, um, for a zombie film, and even in the, zomb the final zombie act, there's very little shaky cam involved, which to me is like, wow. Cinematography, uh, of course, it's not like Roger Deakins level. Uh, it just looks short uh, as is. It's like how... Uh, Telly movie, a TV movie yeah. would be short. Which, you know, um, could it's, it's well produced, but it's not stylish. It's not cinematic. But for me, the comedy sort of compensated for that. As a zombie movie, this is actually very, very traditional, despite what the director's spin on it is. And it's traditional in the sense that there is the social or societal messages. Class the rural-urban divide, Over -analyzing. Ex exploitation and alienation. For me, it's uh, it's an original take on the zombie uh, movie. But uh, you, you need someone like Edgar Wright to really pull it off, to really go screwball zany. Yeah, you, you need Edgar Wright or Takashi Miike. But Edgar Wright also has a very comic book uh, visual style. Uh, it can be a bit intrusive uh, if you don't like it. The way he plays with the cameras, the, uh, the scene dissolves. You're very aware of the director of the, of the camera. It's very stylized. Guys like Edgar Wright and Max Landis, they are really creative. They come up with uh, crazy, crazy scripts. Uh, this wasn't crazy enough, even though it really called for it. I, I would actually agree with it here. Yeah? And this film is funny, but it's not crazy. For zombie comedies these days, you really have to go crazy or you go bust. So, uh, unfortunately, I cannot recommend this movie. Unless you have an interest uh, in, Cor in Korea, uh, you want to see what a, a Korean uh, farming a village looks like. And how a zombie apocalypse could possibly even start in the outskirts of civilization. For me, um, one of... I was... For me, the movie was funny but not funny enough. I only realized it when I got very distracted by the um, comedy music and the clown show music sort of signal that the film wasn't as funny as a director intended and he was compensating for it with a laugh track. If you watch uh, Edgar Wright's um, Shaun of the Dead, The Wolves, and you realise that a lot of comedy is just achieved without very intrusive music to tell you Oh, this is a funny scene, or this is a sad scene. That, to me, is really great filmmaking. Which I think the Ott family didn't quite achieve. So overall, Kit here will not watch it again. I would probably watch it if it's on Netflix. So uh, that's it from us for today. Remember to click like twice because we always believe the double tap. No, if you click twice, you will, you will like it and you, you will unlike it. Okay, so we, we believe in a triple tap. Just to make sure the zombie is really, really, really dead. And we'll see you next week.